Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and today we're going to look at long run growth factors, factors that cause the long run aggregate supply curve or the Keynesian aggregate supply curve and the PPC curve to shift out or inward. In microeconomics, you will start by using the production possibilities curve, and we can use this production possibilities curve as well in macroeconomics. When we get to macroeconomics, uh, we first start learning about the business cycle. And I have other videos that explain that. Uh, in the business cycle, we're measuring time on the x-axis and real GDP, or the total amount of final goods and services produced in an economy. And we're measuring that on the y-axis. And we know that economies uh, go through cycles. They cycle upward into what we call an inflationary gap from point A to B and then downward from B to C to D into a recessionary gap or a contraction. And we can collect all of that GDP data, that unemployment data, that inflation data, and we can build what we call a long-term growth trend, which is our potential GDP. With the factors of production that we have, the land, the labor, and capital resources, this long-term growth trend illustrates the amount of goods and services that we are able to produce over long periods of time. So if we look at point A and point C and point E, it illustrates that long-term potential GDP. And at those points, A, C, and E, we can collect unemployment data to see what is our long-run average level of unemployment, as well as inflation, what's the long-run level of inflation within the economy. And those can be indications of whether or not we are at uh, full potential. So for the United States, for example, their unemployment rate typically be around 5%. And the inflation rate could typically be about 2% over, uh, you know, a 40, 50 year period. So if we see that if unemployment's at 5% and inf inflation's at 2%, that could indicate that we're at point A or point C or point E. We also notice that over time, that potential GDP, YP1, increases to YP2 to YP3 over time. So as time increases from T1 to T2 to T3, we see that our potential output starts to rise over time. If that is the case, then in our macro models of the monetarist LRAS curve or the Keynesian model, Keynesian aggregate supply curve, uh, if we see the potential GDP increasing, that would indicate an increase in that potential GDP. So that would mean that the LRAS curve, our aggregate supply in the long run is increasing which I can illustrate as such. LRAS1 to LRAS2, it's increasing over time from YP1 to YP2, right? YP1 to YP2 in the business cycle, we see over time potential GDP increasing, All right? That long aggregate supply curve illustrative points A, C, and E. It's the same thing with the Keynesian aggregate supply curve. Keynesian aggregate supply, to be increasing over time. So here I'll have Keynesian aggregate supply curve number two, thus illustrating that the potential GDP is increasing from YP1 to YP2. Oops. Y, P, 2, all right? So these points on our macro models of a uh, full potential, one, increasing to full potential, two, or in the Keynesian model, full potential, one, increasing to full potential, two, is indicative or illustrated in the business cycle as, over time, that potential GDP increasing at points A, C, and E. Okay, the production possibilities curve can also incre uh, illustrate that increase. But first, let's understand what are these factors. So the point of this video is going over what we see here, the long run economic growth factors, factors that cause the long run aggregate supply curve, or the Keynesian aggregate supply curve to increase, and also what causes the production possibilities curve to increase, which we need to know in microeconomics and later in macroeconomics. 
The first three factors should, that should come to mind, and, I, and I'm really going to stress this, you should absolutely know that any change in the quantity of resources, our factors of production, land, labor, capital, or any change in the quality of those resources, for example, labor, if it goes from low skilled labor to high skilled labor over time due to investments in education or changes in technology will automatically lead to the LRAS curve increasing or the Keynes aggregate supply curve increasing or the production possibilities curve increasing. That by definition is a cause for the PPC to shift out from PPC one to PPC two. It is shifting out in the same way that the LRS and the Keynesian aggregate supply curve are shifting out. Any change, again, I'm emphasizing any change in the quantity of land labor capital, any change in the quality of those factors, land labor and capital, or any change in technology would lead to a change in the aggregate supply curve or the PPC curve. It can shift outward or it could shift inward. If you gain more land labor capital resources, it would be shifting out. If you have people migrating out of your country, that's less labor, less quantity of labor, then it would be shifting in. If you've improved the quality of your labor, then it would shift out. If your high skilled labor leaves your country, potentially then LRS could be shifting in. You're left with more low skilled labor because the high skilled labor has, has uh, migrated out of the country. That could be considered a brain drain. And hopefully in all cases, technology just leads to an increase in aggregate supply. So the PPC can shift outward or it could shift inward. The Keynesian aggregate supply curve can shift outward or it can shift inward due to a change again in the quantity, the quality of resources or a change in technology. Okay, that has to be absolutely clear. In microeconomics, macroeconomics, if these three, three factors uh, change, then that's a shift in the LRES, Keynes aggregate supply, and the PPC. Okay, and here maybe it's going from X1 to X2, Y1 to Y2. But there's some other factors that can lead to a shift or actual growth. If we're talking about improved efficiency, if you've acquired new technology, and you've trained labor to utilize that technology and uh, firms are aggressively trying to reduce their cost of production, getting the most that they can from our scarce resources of land, labor, and capital, then that improvement in efficiency, again, would lead to a shift in the long run aggregate supply curve and the Keynesian aggregate supply curve, it would be shifting out. But in the PPC curve, that would be different. If we're improving efficiency, if we're becoming more productively efficient, that would be actual growth. That would mean, for example, that we would be at uh, a point within the pr production possibilities curve, let's say point A, and we're improving the overall efficiency, so we're becoming more productively efficient, so we're moving closer to the PPC, which is illustrative of the most productively efficient we can be with our resources. So if there is improved efficiency, you, you must know that the LRS Keynesian aggregate supply curve would shift out or in, but improved efficiency by definition means it's shifting out. But in the PPC model, that's actual growth. You're using this quantity of resources and this is the level of efficiency. You've improved their efficiency. So we're reaching productive efficiency along the PPC curve. So we're going from point A to point B. Number five, what about a reduction in the natural rate of unemployment? This is a macroeconomic concept. The natural rate includes seasonal unemployment, structural unemployment, frictional unemployment. If, you're, if your nation is able to reduce the seasonal, structural, or frictional unemployment, then that is a shift. You'd be shifting outward from LRS1 to LRS2, from Keynesian aggregate supply 1 to Keynesian aggregate supply 2. Uh, but again, with the PPC model, that would be more employment of our resources. So that would be actual growth. We would be at point A, moving out to point B. So for example, uh, Spain, this is their unemployment rate over time. Perhaps the average level, that long-term average level of unemployment is maybe 15%. That 15% includes their frictional, seasonal, and structural unemployment. If they're able to reduce their frictional unemployment, seasonal unemployment, structural unemployment 
to something maybe comparable to their neighbor of Andorra, which I don't have long run unemployment data, but let's just assume that their long run unemployment data is 4%. So if Spain's able to reduce their, their natural rate of unemployment from 15 to 5%, then again, that would be uh, actual growth from point A to point B. I have another video that, that highlights that. Okay, so that's clear. Reduced natural rate, that's a shift in the aggregate supply curve. But in the PPC curve, that's actual growth from point A to point B. And the last factor that can lead to long-run economic growth is what we call institutional changes. Uh, government legislation or regulation changes that can increase competition and productive efficiency that can lead to increased employment of unemployed labor. If these laws are passed, making the uh, overall economy more of a market economy, then we would expect the potential GDP to increase. If you have institutional changes that makes it more difficult for entrepreneurs to start businesses, to hire and fire labor, um, make the economy less competitive, then potentially the aggregate supply could shift in. In regards to the PPC, we can't represent that uh, within the model. All right, so that's an overview. What is the factors that cause long run economic growth using macro models or the PPC? If you have any questions, feel free to comment those questions below and don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.